At nearly 200 miles long, the Chesapeake Bay is North America's largest estuary. Its tidal expanse fed by fresh water from more than 100,000 streams, creeks, and rivers, some hundreds of miles from the bay proper. Today, more than 18 million people in six states and the District of Columbia live on land that drains into the Chesapeake. Our impact on these local landscapes directly affects the waters downstream. When John Smith made his famous bay voyage in 1608, some 40 to 50,000 native people were living along its shores, harvesting its bounty of fish and shellfish. Early British settlers and enslaved Africans arrived to virgin forests and clean waters. But by 1900, human activity had begun to diminish the watershed's natural systems. Deforestation depleted the region of 70 to 80% of its tree cover allowing more and more sediment to erode into waterways. Overfishing caused harvests of oysters, an important filter feeder, to decline and later plummet. After World War II came industrialized agriculture and rapid population growth. More livestock and more people meant more pollution. Fertilizer and manure from farm fields, car exhaust, sewage discharge, household chemicals, all carrying nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus downstream. And without those trees or oysters to provide natural filtration, these nutrients began feeding large algal blooms that depleted oxygen and created dead zones, suffocating marine life. In 1972, the passage of the Clean Water Act empowered the newly formed Environmental Protection Agency to regulate pollution and water quality standards. In 1983, the EPA, along with Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and the District of Columbia, signed the Chesapeake Bay Agreement, acknowledging shared responsibility to address the Bay's declining health. Since then, billions have been spent on studying and cleaning up the Bay, but with participation voluntary, progress was slow. Which is why in 2010, the EPA exercised its authority under the Clean Water Act and put the watershed on a pollution diet, a set of regulations to limit and reduce, over time, the amount of nutrients that can escape into the bay. Officially, it's known as the Total Maximum Daily Load, or TMDL, and it comes with a deadline. By 2025, all practices to meet water quality standards are to be in place. In 2014, the Chesapeake Bay Watershed Agreement set additional goals, establishing concrete outcomes needed to achieve an environmentally and economically sustainable watershed with abundant life, conserved lands, engaged communities, climate resiliency, and clean water. It too set a deadline, 2025. Strides have been made, wastewater treatment plants are polluting less, and large-scale oyster restoration projects are showing promise. But the watershed at large will fall short on many of the 2025 goals, from water quality to wetland, to the diversity of voices in the cleanup conversation. What's more, a recent landmark study has called both our current course and expectations about restoration into question. Stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app.